This project is called a hub. Its circular shape allows us to use a sketch of one section which I can revolve around a center line. I've started a new part studio in millimeters. I'll start a sketch and I want to use the right sketch plane. And to start, I want to create a center line. So I want the end of the center line to be coincident to the origin, and I'll drag it out here to the left, and that will become the center of the hub. I'm going to use a corner rectangle. I want this to be projected from the origin, and the rectangular horizontal part of the hub I'll draw here, and the vertical here. Both of these have a coincident corner with the origin. From here I'll start dimensioning. Now I can use symmetrical dimensions using my center line. So if I say the distance from this edge to the center line, when I drop below the center line, it shows me the total distance. In this case, the center hole has a diameter of 45, and that's reflected in that dimension. The dimension from the top outside edge, this is 160, and that's reflected there. Next I'll set the distance from this corner of the hub and the symmetrical or diameter of this distance is uh, 65. The length of the hub sticking out this way is 60. The thickness of the flange is 10. And I have a line, or I have a, a uh, conical part here that would be reflected by a line. Now I just want to make sure I'm coincident with the horizontal line and I'm coincident, but I don't want to snap to a midpoint, uh, coincident there. Because now I can add that the distance from this point through the center line is 100. And the distance from this back edge to the front is 45. Okay, with this done I can see that um, all of my sketch elements are fully defined, so I'll accept this sketch. I'm going to use a revolve, and it wants to know what's included in the revolve. I'll use a window to choose all of those items, and my revolve axis is going to be that center line. And I can see the resulting Part, and I'm going to accept that. Next we'll work on making these semicircular slots around the outside. So I'm going to start a new sketch and I'm going to work on this surface. I will view that normal and start with some construction lines. I'm going to have a construction line coincident to the origin, extend up here at an angle, and the slots are on a uh, circle center that has a diameter of 128, but I only need half that amount, so I'll say 128 divided by 2 to establish that length. I'll put another construction line going out this way, and I'm not really concerned about the length of that one. So next I'm going to use my dimension tool and dimension an angle between this first construction line and my vertical line there. And this should be 30 degrees. And then an angle between these two construction lines should have a total of 60 degrees. And with this, I can uh, use a center point arc, and I also want this to be a 
construction or center line, this will be the center point, the origin. The end point of this construction line will be one circle center end of the arc, and coincident to this construction line will be the other end. From here, I'm going to use my slot uh, sketch tool. It's under offset, and I will we'll click on this construction line. This has a uh, diameter of 10 and accept that slot. Now there are three slots evenly spaced so I'm going to use a circular pattern. It's asking me for what's included in the circular pattern. I'll choose that first slot. I see these other two are created and it's telling me to click the left mouse button to accept that. Now these are showing that they are um, not fully constrained, but I'm going to go ahead and leave them that way and accept that sketch and choose Extrude. I want to remove material. I'm going to choose each of the profile of each of these slots. I want this to go through all. And that looks correct, so I will accept it. And this completes my part.